Okay, I think we're okay, because I can't rotate the phone. I'm not planning on rotating the phone. Um, so, hello, I said uh, sent out a message a little while ago saying I'd found some, uh, or I'd got lots of parts hanging around the studio, and so I thought I'd build a guitar. <laughs> so I did, and um, the kits came in this week, and so I'm just going to show you the complete before. I've not, uh, I didn't do an unboxing while it was there, but, uh, but I'll show you what I've got. Um, so I'm going to tip this down so you just hear my voice, you won't see it. Uh, sort of see me, which nobody's really going to complain about that. So anyway, um, the parts I had were from various mods over the years, but I've got these, which I've taken off my Les Paul. Um, so these are the original Gibson tuners. Uh, they're not locking, but but for this, the purpose of this, th that's fine. Um, I've got various um, electronic parts, but this from my old Jackson that I've got hidden away in a box somewhere. Um, is a wraparound bridge, but it's intonatable so that uh, you can set the strings uh, really well. Um, I actually ended up taking it off the Jackson because it just it just um, was easier to have the old wraparound that had come with it on there. Um, but I was left with this pigtail bridge. Um, it's called a pigtail. And um, so this was actually what got me started. I found this in a box and I thought, well, you know, I can use this. I know how to, how to use this. So that was the the um, genesis of it. I've got some pickups as well, but ultimately I think I'll get a different pickup for it. But I ordered the kit from uh, Precision Guitar Kits. So it's two pieces. Uh, there's the one, which is the body, um, and it's all mahogany. So a very nice piece of mahogany there. I'll just put the neck down so I can hold it out for you. So, oops, it'll be around that way for you on, on the video, I believe. Um, so that's the body this is the neck for the guitarists among you the frets are finished really nicely and really well dressed i um actually went through and uh, they've, they've been polished as well which is kind of cool i've done a leveling check on it there's one or two frets that maybe there's a hair high um but what i'm going to do is i'm going to make the guitar put it together and then um see how it plays if they don't cause me any problem then i'm not going to bother doing a, a refret and a repolish on those frets it's uh this fret here and this fret here so um, it should be okay with uh, the um, relief of the neck, etc. But uh, a really nice job, and uh, this is a like a more expensive kit guitar than than some you can buy. Uh, it's actually made in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, which um, I'm a big fan of Vancouver, as many of you know. Um, so this isn't from the Far East, but what's really satisfying about it is this is um, if you see there's a number on the back here, 1781. Uh, you're probably upside down for that, maybe. Um, but this is 1781 as well, so it's actually matched. It's not just random neck and random body. They're actually match a matched pair. So if I just do this quickly here, you're going to see this um, fairly... That's a really tight joint. Now I'd clamp it and glue it, obviously, but look, I can pick it up with the neck in there. Um, it's not going anywhere. So uh, when I glue that, it's going to be really quite a firm joint. So um, that's the, the kit. I'm very pleased with it. There's a, I need to do some sanding work on it on the neck. Um, and then really, the, the, it's funny because the first thing is not to think about all the hardware pieces that I've got here. They're all gonna go away. Um, so I'm gonna put those in my bag just there. The first thing I need to think about is what I want it to look like, which is really interesting to me. Um, I haven't got the full answer yet. Um, I have always liked the, um, this is a, a obviously a, a Les Paul Jr. Uh, double cut uh, model, which is about as simple as you can get one pickup, um, two controls, and then the bridge. I've always liked the 50s, um, well, it's called TV yellow uh, double cuts, um, which basically were a white wash uh, um, over the, the, the bare wood, um, rubbed back so that the grain showed through and then some grain filler put in there to shave that show the grain up then once that was done they were actually um, as I understand it the original ones were lacquered with nitrocellulose which then over um, the years became yellow and gave that TV yellow as it gets called finish you can get modern TV yellows where they use yellow tinted lacquer but uh, as I understand it the originals were there um, I've also thought I, I you know, I'm not making a Gibson um, Les Paul Jr. I'm not trying to make it vintage um, accurate um, or authentic. I'm not trying to pull that off. So I've got some um, latitude to, to, to do something with it. So I'm just um, 
thinking about what that latitude is at the moment. I do like the idea of white with a colour over it. I've been looking at um, sky blue Stratocasters and um, uh, I think it's the Pelham blue uh, Les Pauls and I kind of like that blue so I'm, I'm going to experiment a little bit I think. The beauty of this is I can and I can always rub it back and um, you know as, as, as proven with my uh, my Stratocaster, my Stratocaster's in its box at the moment, um, in its case, otherwise I'd show it again, the, the one that I burnt. Um, you know, I'm not, not opposed to having guitars that look a little bit weird and a little bit beaten up, um, but I'm not a fan of relicking for relicking's sake. I don't try and make things look old, I just I just like the aesthetics of, of playing with guitars. So with this one, I don't know, I, I think where I've got to at the moment is, I, I picked this up from uh, Lowe's, oh no, Home Depot today. So this is, this is actually chalky finish paint. So it's like a dry finish paint, which when sanded back should give it a texture. I, I kind of like, um, a number of my guitars have got uh, what's called a matte finish, um, um, no, satin finish, there you go. Um, and what happens is it's a very thin coat of lacquer on those and over time where you play rubs, so you can actually see it's like a, it's almost like a calligraphy of your, of your playing style. It, it's, it's got your playing style on the body of the guitar. So I like the feel of that um, rather than the heavy gloss guitars. So I think what I'm going to do is this is chalky finished decor um, paint. So it's for antique, antique and furniture and, and like the rustic movement and furniture or whatever that gets called. Um, but I'm thinking that white as a base coat then rub that back to let the grain through a little bit. And then a very light, maybe even watered down, um, bit of this blue. Let's see if I can get that blue in there. So it'll come up lighter than that, but I kind of like the white showing through the blue, but again with the grain. So I'm gonna see, I need to do a test on a spare piece of wood that's around, um, not too worried about the mahogany through it because the white's gonna be underneath it. But um, the I think those are the colors. So the white underneath and the blue on top. Um, now I've got a uh, the scratch plate I got with the guitar is black. Uh, that's the back side of it. So, but it's that that colour. So it's a blacky grey, um, and I think it's it's not too far off there. Um, typically, Pelham Blue uh, Les Pauls have um, cream scratch plates. So more of this sort of colour. That's actually the um, the the, the uh, uh, sticky layer that's keeping it clean and tidy. But um, it would be that sort of colour with the blue. Um, I don't know if you can see that. That there you go. Um, I don't know. I, th I think it, it's the beauty is these are so interchangeable. These guitars, they're, they're about as simple as it gets. So um, with that in mind, I'll try it. And if not, I'll, I'll order a, um, a cream one of these scratch plates. But I, I suspect the black's going to work quite nicely there. Um, let's put that back in here. And I've got a black uh, scratch plate for the back. I think that's all I want to say at the moment. The only other thing to uh, share before I start working on it really is thinking about the, the neck. Um, it's a nice chunky, for, for guitarists out there, this is a chunky, um, what gets called a baseball bat neck. I, I kind of like it, it's not a thin uh, neck. Quite a simple Gibson shape headstock. Um, my decision on this, uh, oh I shouldn't do it with that finger, let me do it with that finger. Um, my decision on this uh, is about whether to paint it black or not, like my Les Paul and my 335 are black, and typically Gibsons do that. Sometimes you get a color match thing. Because I'm doing the color, the white and blue on here, I'd have to do white and blue on here, and I'm not sure I wanna try that. Also, the other thing is whether I do the back or not. Um, so do I put color on the back? And I don't know, there's a number of guitars out there that you can get now that don't do that, and I kind of like it. I like the idea of taping this off here, so the sides are still wood, but the face is black and then taping off the neck all the way so that when it's seated in here, the blue ends at the body and, and doesn't go onto the neck. Uh, that gives me the feel of the neck. I'll be able to just um, oil the neck then with, uh, with um, true oil or, or linseed oil. Um, so we'll see, we'll see if that works or not. But I think that's everything for now. Um, now I've just got to get sanding and then, then painting and do some paint tests. So we, sh we shall see. I'm quite excited. So with that, I shall say bye-bye, and I hope this video went the right way up. It might be it's sideways on. If so, I'll just delete it and start again. Bye.